Okay, so what are we getting towards today? Uh, just just <coughs> check to a few of you. We know there's loads of uh, things within psychology that I'm sure you're, you're dying to, to ask about or, or address. Um, what we're looking at today is, is how you're acquiring these skills. Uh, and, and as we go through the second part, maybe that, that component will uh, help you understand what, why some of those things that you're experiencing uh, are not going as well. Look at choking under pressure, which is, a, again, a particular passion of mine <laughs> through bad experience. Um, it has some problems in definition. Um, you may remember Jean van der Velde. That was termed as choking under pressure. Anyone remember that one? Yeah. Ryder Cup. Ryder Cup, 91. Yeah. That one? That's pretty cool, mate. Yeah, Augusta. Um, um, what's in... Yeah, Fowler, yeah, 96. Yeah. Square yeah. Norman. Um, again, by accident, when I was putting that slide together, they were all defined as choking. Um, yet yeah, Langers was seven foot, seven, ten foot putt, one shot. Played ever so well the whole round, the whole week. One shot, and that was just defined as, as choking under pressure by some people. Jean van der Velt, for 71 holes, he was three shots better than the rest of the field. And it was just one hole. So we had one shot choking, one hole, this was choking. And then one round. So it started with a five shot lead, ended up with a six shot defeat. Yeah, so they were all defined as choking, and yet completely different experiences. Doesn't just happen in golf, I love this, this slide. It can happen in any domain. Which of the following is the largest? <laughs> that actually happens. An elephant. An elephant's bigger than the moon. So, so what's going on here? What's going on with one shot if we think that Langer choked? What's going on with Jean van der Velt? Um, just tell me with Jean van der Velt, that's the most recent, 1999. What do you think happened? Because he can't, the, the reality, for those of you who don't remember it, off the tees, hit it, I don't know, 40 yards right off the tees, then hit it into the grandstand. They had taken a drop into the rough, dunched it in the water. Why did he lose the opening in 99, for those of you who remember? It's bad, 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 bad caddy and course management. Bad caddy and course management. Desperate to finish. Desperate to finish, yeah. Could be, yeah. Did he listen to his caddy? Did he listen to that? Yeah, did his caddy talk to him? <laughs> yeah. I think he was unlucky. He was unlucky. Well, I'll tell you for why, because the ball that came off the grandstand hit a one-inch piece of metal that put it back into the river. It was. If it hit a spectator, it would have stayed there and got in the drop zone. That's right, yeah, it got in the stand. He'd have won the open. Yeah. It was good course management, he was just done like it. And what was he going through as he, as he stood in the water then? Just pulled at his feet off. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he blanked out. He didn't look at the options. Yeah. Norman, any opinions on Norman? Is he a choker? Past experiences. <coughs> Past experiences. And he's got this reputation of being a, a choker, and yet 87, Larry Mize chipped him from 100 feet. Uh, 86, Bob Tway hold a bunker shot to beat him in the PGA, if memory serves correctly. I think uh, another guy has beat him in a, in a, in a tournament from holding a shot from the middle of the fairway. Fowlow twice, though, went head to head with him and, and beat him once at St Andrews in 1990, and then 96. Which of those do you think the a definition that fits with choking for you, or is all three of them? Or none of them? In the water? No, I'm not choking. That one is. So what's going on? I'll keep this brief. This is the science bit. This is my life. Conscious processing hypothesis. The tendency to introduce conscious control over a movement. Uh, focusing attention on the process of performance disrupt, disrupts the automatic processing of the task. Basically, all the stuff that we've done in the first half, all that information you try and call upon when you're in situations of pressure. What that does is that overloads your working memory and that causes the skill to break down. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, I don't, I'm not being patronising, I just know that all of that stuff uh, doesn't. Yeah? So, there's something about the amount of information that you've got at hand that's causing some problems. All the golfers that we looked at in that, that short film, there's something different about the information that they've got. You know, they developed it themselves. That's what I'm interested in. They've got very complex movements. A lot of them have got more complicated golf swings technically than you guys. Him and Darcy has. Yeah? 
But in times of pressure, he's played a couple of Ryder Cups, and I think he held the winning putt in '87. So he was able to to hold up under pressure with that that swing with the, the right flying elbow. There. So what does that mean? That the analogy I use a lot is if you imagine standing uh, at home, and let's say for example you were drinkers and you drink red wine. You might drink red wine every night and have no problem drinking it and you never spill it. But if you come around my house on my cream carpet and I tell you to be careful, yeah, you drop it. Start thinking about what you're doing. That's what that, that science bit's about. Because we've all got experiences of that. I do it with my stepdaughter with her milkshake. I tell her to be careful and she spills it every time. <laughs> but, but she does it. Um, so there's evidence, there's research that suggests that's what happens. Now, if you look at some of the most complex movements that you've ever learned, walking, learning to walk, you'll never learn a more complex skill than, than, than walking. And just imagine what that would be like if you had the ability to speak first. So when you were taught how to walk, you could speak first. Teaching you how to walk would look completely different. It might be, right, start with your feet together, get yourself balanced, and you're gonna lift your right knee up, move forward, you know, that's what we'd do if it was a golf swing. But what we actually do is we pick you up, you fall over, you get up, you try again, yeah, and we can all walk very well. In fact, now we can trip over something and maintain our balance because we've learned to adapt. We have a few drinks and still walk. So, you know, we have an ability to acquire skills and we don't seem to take the lessons from those. If you, you know, those of you who drive, you've all driven here today, if you've been unfortunate enough to, to have a bump in the car, I don't think you run back to the driving school to have some more lessons. But you have this inbuilt you know, trust that you know how to drive and you'll correct it next time. Yeah. Successful coaches. Clive Woodward. Maybe. Maybe. In, <laughs> in, in, in one area, yeah. Yeah, in, in different <laughs> spheres. So Just trying to get an understanding of of what these guys do, how they get their information across, because they're all defined as great coaches. The next one, probably one of the best, the second best, Harry Redknapp. <laughs> as a Spurs fan, he's, he's a god. David Ledbetter. We only hear about his successes. He's, he's worked with hundreds and hundreds of golfers, tens of top players, uh, and they haven't all achieved what Nick Price achieved, what Faldo achieved, what David Frost achieved. There's a few that no longer own their golf swings and they've got this very robotic movement uh, and weren't able to perform as well. And Butch Hunt. Do you know how many uh, tour players in America have better coaches now? None. No. Really. And it has, it has stages because now we have Butch Hunt, but this is the great coach for me. Bit indulgent this next, this next bit. For those of you who haven't seen the Karate Kid, who, has anyone seen the Karate Kid? Or is this just going to be for my benefit? <laughs> if you forget everything that you hear today, if I pass no knowledge on at all, and just go and buy the Karate Kid, it's all in there, okay? So I'll play you a, a short clip from the Karate Kid. <coughs> 